Hello, I'm Jeff Riddle of the Natural Health Advisory Institute. We're here with Dr. Kate Namas in Dallas, Texas at Holistic Wellness. Now, in our previous video, we spoke about um, the symptoms and complications of endometriosis. Now we're going to talk about um, some ways of dealing with it. So, as usual, most conventional therapies focus on painkillers and steroids, but from what I've learned and you know looked in the studies, these things don't actually make endometriosis go away. They just treat symptoms. And some women have even had some pretty extreme operations done like hysterectomies. What else have you heard about that, that conventional therapies use? So what women are recommended is analgesics, painkillers, hormonal medical therapy such as estrogen, progesterone, oral contraceptives, progestin only, gonadotropin releasing hormone agonists, um, and then also surgery. So those are the different recommendations that women usually come in having tried or are afraid to try, but that's what their doctor has recommended, and now they're coming to see me to see if there is an alternative. Okay, that's intelligent. I hope that happens yes. frequently. Yes, <laughs> it really does, it, especially when they're struggling with infertility, because a lot of those treatments are not available to women who are trying to get pregnant. Right, or when something doesn't work five times in a row, maybe you should start to think. Right. Or the women are worried that they've been taking pain medication for 10 years and they don't want to continue taking pain medication at such a regular, at such regular intervals. Yeah. Now, like a lot of natural therapies, you know, there might be like, like you said, five or 600 different herbs that might have the same effect. But what are your guidelines as far as natural alternatives? So when I'm thinking about endometriosis, I want to think about immune modulation, reducing inflammation, decreasing the influence of estrogen, since it's an estrogen-dependent condition, increasing liver function, since our liver helps to metabolize our own endogenous estrogens, decreasing oxidative damage, um, inhibiting growth factors, and also anti-angiogenesis herbs. And then I'm also thinking about environmental toxicity factors like dioxins or phthalates or solvents or pesticides that a woman may be exposed to in high levels. And there are lots of different herbs that can work on those different categories, but when I'm working with a woman with endometriosis, I'm thinking about each of those categories. Do you change a woman's diet when you think that she has endometriosis? Definitely. Diet plays a huge part in our endometriosis plan when we're working with a client. And we always think about educating them on an antioxidant-rich diet, which basically is lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, especially green leafy vegetables. We think about decreasing inflammation through diet, lots of ginger, lots of turmeric, flavonoids, essential fatty acids, and good quality fish. Um, we're going to educate women about the importance of eating an organic diet and partly that's because we want to decrease her exposure to estrogenic pesticides um, and herbicides and also decrease alcohol and caffeine. So the big take home is increase your fresh fruits and vegetables, decrease coffee and alcohol, and focus on an anti-inflammatory antioxidant diet. Awesome. Thanks again so much for talking about this. Uh, I'm Jeff Fertile. We've been here at Holistic Wellness in Dallas, Texas with Dr. Namas. Thank you for watching.